What's up guys, this is Jake with the Code Duck channel. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a prompt that Project Kyle, if you follow him on Twitter, his link will be in the description, or uh, Planet Booktube, he's also the same guy, but they'll be in the description as well. Uh, he posed a question that is based off a questionnaire from another one of you booktubers, and the question was basically a little bit of a, a villain questionnaire. In the stories that you write, what motivates your villain, among other things? So I'm going to stick with those things, the things that motivate my villain in my story that I've written on Wattpad, again, in the description. Um, what motivates my villain? Now, I think the, the most important part of any story that has, you know, the good versus evil, which is pretty much any fantasy epic like mine, it has a lot to do with dynamic villains, right? The, the main villain that we all think just wants to take over the world. Uh, a lot of us find ourselves asking, like, well, what are you going to do if you do it? Like, so, okay, you get the world, then what? What's your plan? Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what motivates my villain, uh, what his driving force is, and what he wants to accomplish. So obviously the, the scale of the story that I'm writing is large. It, it takes into account a world, obviously, as, as most of these typically do. But what motivates my villain is, is much less than like revenge or anger or greed or something like that. It's actually the, 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 the story that I'm writing confronts a lot about the the dynamic of family, as well as the dynamic of a family that is chronically mentally ill, or just chronically ill in general. It goes a lot into invisible illness and chronic illness. It goes into the daily lives of people who do better than most, despite the fact that they don't have the tools that other people have, naturally. Uh, so the idea of, of this is a lot of the villains, the, the main characters, the good characters, the bad characters, they're all connected in some way, obviously. But what motivates my villain is is a sense of duty to his family, actually. It's actually quite noble. Um, it's not a vengeance thing. It's not an anger thing. It's more... He believed in the cause that was the backdrop of this book and this series. He believed in it. But he happened to believe in the goal of the side that lost. Um, so basically, he's trying to, to, to bring that ideal back. Um, so he has a great sense of, of family, love of family, uh, wanting to make sure that his family name is not destroyed and, and, and can kind of redeem it a little bit. Um, another thing that it focuses on, again, is the, is the concept of abuse. What happens to people who are abused? What happens to people who are who are treated poorly, either from childhood or in their work days, or if you're a minority, or, or if you're an underrepresented um, demographic, you know, what happens? What's it like to be one of those people? And I've talked with a lot of folks actually in research for this story over the past several years, because that's how long it's taken me to even get to this part, this point. Um, and I've got some material that we're going to address. What's it like to be an equal but less than at the same time, or superior to but still seen as less than. We're also going to talk about the power of belief. A lot of people think that simply believing in something is nonsense, but here's the thing. Confidence wins. If you approach something like you've already won, typically you will. And the reason for that is because we tend to be less inhibited when we're confident. And I think the biggest problem that a lot of us have, be it heroes in books or real life people, is we are so afraid to go forward towards our goals. We're so afraid of success that, excuse me, uh, live stream. Um, we're so afraid of success that we ultimately sabotage ourselves and I think this my story ultimately wants to look into the point of what happens when we can, when we do believe and we absolutely shouldn't I mean look at all the people in the world that you would never expect to succeed but they simply it never entered their minds that they wouldn't so we're gonna explore that a little bit as well as well as challenging social norms I think a lot of books are very um, you know, unidimensional as, as far as the norms typically go, they typically follow a temp simple template. And then some authors add meaningless headcanon on Twitter or something after the fact to try to make it not that way. I mean, I don't know. It's, I'm not being specific. It's just the thing. Maybe I, some people might do that. I don't know. Um, we're going to challenge those norms. And we're also going to challenge a lot of things that fantasy books don't address, which is you know, the arrogant guy eventually gets humbled. Well, honestly, sometimes those who are chronically arrogant have ultimately earned it. They've accomplished everything they've set out to accomplish. Does it excuse the behavior? No. But I think a lot of times the arrogant guy being put in his place by 
the Luke Skywalker type who just discovered his power two minutes ago is ultimately frustrating for me as the reader because how, how in the world? This, this no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. So we're going to challenge that a little bit too, which is another norm. Is that sometimes people are arrogant for a reason, and sometimes they kind of deserve to be. Again, it doesn't excuse the behavior, but I mean, sometimes you've got you're going to be humbled by someone who's arrogant way more often than the other way around. Um, we're also going to talk a lot about the power of healing. What happens after something has has traumatized somebody? How do they recover? How do they move on? How do they move forward? How do they rebuild what they lost? And I think anybody that struggles with chronic illness, like I do, like Project Kyle does, we struggle with invisible illness too, is there's a lot of expectations that people have for people like us. Um, you know, you're autistic, you have X, you know, IQ, you're doing this and do that. Why can't you just get out of your own way? I mean, I think that's such a huge part of our society today, especially in America where I live and in Western society in general. Um, it's something that we all really struggle with. So we're going to address that a little bit too. How do you heal? How do you move on? And how do you block out all naysayers? How do we do that? So that's another thing that we're going to discuss. And finally, we're going to, the ultimate theme of this book is going to round off in coming to terms with your past, coming to terms with what you've done, coming to terms with what you haven't done, and trying to move forward, which basically means that our hero is not always going to succeed. Now, it's not going to be Song of Ice and Fire stuff where your favorite people are killed off immediately after you've come to terms with loving them unconditionally. It's not going to be that. We're not going to follow those norms. We're also going to try to keep it as clean as humanly possible, no graphic. You know, no sex, no violence to, in, to a graphic degree, no gore. We're not going to go there because that's cheap, gimme stuff. That is cheap plot movement. It's unnecessary and it's a total waste. So we're not going to do that at all. We're going to try to move our story with good prose, good plot point development, good character development, and we're also going to just challenge norms as much as we can. So this week, I wanted to come to you guys and kind of give you a little bit of a rundown of what my story is about. Again, link in the description. The story is called Duke of Shadows. It is book one of the Heritage Chronicles, which is the series that I am writing. There are seven parts up right now, um, which kind of takes us through the beginning until the hero leaves where he ultimately goes. It's like, in, in RPG terms, it's like he's just left the starter area, right? So that's where we're at. Um, but it, it talks a lot about the struggles of people with suicidal ideation, with mental illness, chronic illness, mood disorders, processing sensory disorders, invisible illness. We're going to go into all sorts of stuff, but we're going to do it in a fantastic way where these people are seen as champions by more than just UNICEF or the people doing commercials for them. They're going to be the champions that are, that are really talked about a lot in this story. So if you want to check it out, part one through seven in the description, I write under the pen name William McTavish. And the reason for that is I absolutely love the Scottish people. I have a a lot of Celtic in me um, and honestly it was just a way to hide my identity <laughs> at first but it's grown to something that I really love and Will McTavish or Bill McTavish is actually as much a character as any of the characters in the book only he's the author and he's me so we're gonna cover that we're gonna talk about it give a link in the description give a star a read a comment what you liked what you didn't like um, I'm really really looking forward to getting this in front of some people because it, it, it's really important to me and I've been working on this since I was 16 years old and I'd really love to hear what you guys have to say. So we're going to develop a lot of things. It's going to be a little different, but it's going to be a lot of the same as well. And I really hope you enjoy it. So this has been Jake with the Code Duck channel. Um, leave a comment in the box. I want to do a code tutorial for you guys. I'm a Python engineer. I'm a web developer and a cloud developer and an automation engineer. So my daily life revolves around building things with Python uh, I, so I can teach you know web code tutorials things like that I really like to do a code tutorial so leave a link in the description to or not a link but a comment uh, on this video about what you guys would want to learn what you want to know how to break into programming anything that you want to know just ask and I will be sure to do a video about it probably later this week so again Jake with code duck really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say and I